welcome. It's good to have you a part of this particular video. This one's entitled Tying a Knot That Holds, and it's part of our pre-marriage counseling, marriage counseling series that's being offered here online at Bentley Creek Wesleyan. Uh, one of my pet peeves is shoes that won't stay tied. You tie them before you leave the house, you, you tie them in the driveway, then you tie them at work, then you tie them when you're at the store. You spend half your day, <laughs> spend half your day on your knee re resecuring the laces of a particular shoe because those laces just don't seem to want to stay tied. I mean, is it the knot? Uh, is it the laces themselves? Are they too slippery? Uh, is it the one doing the tying? Am, am I the one that keeps messing it up? But uh, what? Why won't certain shoes just stay tied? I had a pair of dress shoes that did that all the time. It just drove you crazy. Even a double knot seemed to just kind of make its way out and slip off. One look on the internet and uh, you'll be astounded at how many different kinds of knots there are out there. I, I just looked up a few and I, I listed them here. Angler's knot, barrel hitch, blood knot, bowline, clove hitch, figure eight, half hitch, hangman's noose, lariat loop, monkey's fist, sheet bend, uh, slip knot, square knot, Windsor. That one's used for neckties, which by the way, you can see all my neckties or a bunch of them that I put out here. The list goes on and on. Each type of knot has its own purpose. And once tied, it's really, it's expected to stay that way and fulfill the purpose for which it was used. However, if you tie it wrong, well, it, it may not hold. I remember at an event in my adolescent years when I tied two ropes together to uh, swing from one section of a tree to another. And I don't know what went wrong, I, but I tied it, I grabbed a hold of it, I swung and I ended up on the ground on my back gasping for air because whatever I tied didn't hold and down I came flat on my back. For every knot, there is a sequence or a procedure that you go through in order to create it. For example, the square knot. When I go to tie a square knot, I always think in my mind, left over right, and then right over left, and then you pull it together. It gives me a square knot. The bowline, learned that when I was in scouts, starts with a cursive E. You take the rope and you, you bend it around itself as if you were drawing a cursive E, and then bring the rabbit out of the hole. You bring him around the tree and put him back down the hole, and that creates the bowline. Or the Windsor, over, around, and down through, around again, and through, and then down through the little tag. That is uh, how you actually tie a tie. Show you real quick. I'll use this one in the center here. Put this tie around my neck here and it's ready. Over, around, and down through. Whoop. Around again, and up through. And then you take this big part and you put it through this little part right here. Whoop. And ta-da, there is a full Windsor tie, all nicely done for whoever needs to wear it. If you do it wrong, then it may not hold. It may not hold together. You may have to retie it. Marriage is a lot like that. No wonder they call it tying the knot. A man and a woman stand before God, a minister and their friends and family, and they promise to have and to, well, to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us part. I love the fact that it says to have and to, to hold. Marriages are supposed to last. Once tied, they're meant to hold. Marriages are also as different as the styles of knots, each with their own sequence and procedure for individual success. However, there are some overarching principles to tying a knot so that it stays tied that can be applied to marriage as well. That's what I'd like to spend just a few minutes on in this particular video. Again, uh, down below at the bottom of these videos, at the bottom of this page, you will find, uh, um, you'll find some PDFs that have a, a sermon sheet, a sermon notes sheet in it. And we'd love for you to grab a hold of that and uh, fill in the blanks along the way. That way I know that you've uh, participated in these online uh, pre-marriage uh, times together. So uh, uh, take a moment and grab that. Hopefully you already have and uh, you're ready to get into this. Let me start by reading a passage of scripture from the Apostle Paul 
uh, from the book of Colossians, a letter to the, that he wrote to the Colossian Christians, the Christians in Colossae, um, chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. It goes like this. <clears throat> Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. <clears throat> do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed in the knowledge and the image of its creator here there's no greek or jew circumcised or uncircumcised barbarian scythian slave or free but christ is all and is in all therefore as god's chosen people holy and dearly loved clothe yourselves with compassion kindness humility gentleness and patience bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have towards one another forgive as the lord forgave you and over all these virtues put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity now you might be thinking well that doesn't sound like a really a marriage one i mean you were in the song of solomon for one of these videos and we talk a lot about those love passages but this this one here doesn't sound like a marriage passage well bear with me for a little bit i'd like to uh through this passage it's speaking generically to the Colossian Christians. Uh, however, the message can be easily applied to married couples. Allow me to share with you three steps to tying a marriage knot that will hold based on this passage. Here's the first one. Be sure to set your marital knot correctly. Reverend Harold Little taught me the full Windsor over, around, and down through, around again, and up through, and then tuck it down through the little tab. He taught three of us boys when we were eight years old back in the Rome Wesleyan Church. Now, in order for the tie to come out right, you have to set it up properly. If the small end is too long, then it sticks out. You know, you got the big end, then you got the little end sticking out too long. Or if it's too short, then the tie looks like an apron. It's hanging down to your knees. It has to be just right. You've got to set the whole thing up right and wrap it and tie it the right way in order to get the perfect full Windsor. Unless you set it up right, the knot really doesn't work. When you compare marriage to tying the knot, then the same is true. You have to set the knot correctly in order for it to function properly. Check out what Paul tells the Colossians. It's in verses 1 and 2. He says, set your hearts on things above. A little later he says, set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Two times he uses the word set. I looked up the word set in an online dictionary, and I was amazed. There were over 90 different definitions to the word set, S-E-T. Here's just a few of them, and I put them right in that, in that note sheet of yours. To put in a particular place, he set the vase on the table. To resolve or decide upon, we set our wedding date. To present as a model, he set a good example. Or how about this one? To put back in position, the doctor set his broken arm. Paul is calling Christians, and I'm calling you as a couple, to set your hearts and minds on godly principles that will enable your marriage to withstand the natural pressures of living in this day and age. One section of the marriage covenant actually reads like this. If these solemn vows be faithfully kept, and if steadfastly you endeavor to do the will of your Heavenly Father, your life will be full of joy, and the home you are establishing will abide in peace. Part of the process of tying a knot that holds is setting up your marriage for success. You want a marriage that's going to hold, you want to set it up right so that it's going to. Here's the second one I want you to see, and that is protect your marriage knot from hazardous forces. Maybe this has never happened to you, but I was in a hurry, uh, and, uh, hurry one morning, and I went to tie my shoes. It was my dress shoes, and the, the, 
The lace snapped, snapped right in my hand. So I just kind of retied it as a knot together because I really, I didn't have a lot of time uh, to go and I, I didn't have time to relace it nor did I have any laces for it. So I quickly tied it into a knot and then I went to yank it and tighten it up so that I could tie it, tie my shoe and go. When all of a sudden it broke again and my hand came up <laughs> right in the face, right in the middle of the morning, just boom, punch myself right in the mouth. The best knot in the world can't hold itself indefinitely against a sharp knife, a fire, or even mice gnawing on it, or just the wear and tear of pulling it through those eyelets every day, day in, day out. No matter how well you tie things, if there are outside forces burning, cutting, or nibbling away at your knot, it's bound to fail. Over time, without, without doing something to strengthen that knot, it will fail. With that in mind, look at what Paul shares with the Colossians. In verse 5, he says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly na nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. You jump down to verses 8 and 9, and he says, You must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other. Put to death and rid yourselves, are, are, they're pretty poignant terms. And the lists he gives are many of the types of things that mess up marriages. I mean, we all know people whose marriages have crumbled before your marriage, and some of those things in those lists were the exact reasons why it happened. We need to protect our marriages by not allowing these kinds of things into them, not allow them to work at the knot that we're trying to tie securely. Part of the process of tying a knot that holds is protecting your marriage from that which will jeopardize the integrity of your marriage knot. Let me give you a third one. Enhance your marital knot by weaving in some stronger cords. I, I personally, I, I've never been skydiving, but I have been coerced into a ride called the Sky Coaster once with a bunch of teens. Three people were harnessed together. I was in the middle. Lifted 210 feet off the ground and then dropped to swing between two towers. When they were preparing to hoist us up, I saw the cord that they were using, and I thought, you got to be kidding me. It is this thin little thing. And I'm thinking, ah! And they're like, oh, yeah, it's, it's paracord. It's, it, it's like the same stuff that parachuters use. And I'm thinking, okay, that's awful thin. But yet, typical parachute cord isn't one rope, but seven to nine of them all woven together. The strength of this cord is in its synergy. And when falling through the air, you're very grateful for all those little strands working together like they do. With that in mind, this is what Paul said in Colossians 3. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. He's giving the Colossian Christians a list of positive traits to weave into their lives instead of the negative ones that he denounced earlier in the chapter. As couples, these are the things we must weave into our relationship to keep it from unraveling, to keep that knot secure. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, and love. There's seven of them right there. Remember what Solomon said? A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Ecclesiastes 4.12. Can you imagine putting all seven of those? into your marriage. Part of the process of tying a knot that holds is weaving into your marriage the positive traits that will strengthen your bonds of matrimony. Let me share verse 14 with you. Paul uses an incredibly appropriate word for our purposes here today. And over all these virtues, put on love which binds them all together in perfect unity. As couples, we're called to have and to hold from this day forward. Tying the knot so that it stays tied. That's what that's all about. May we learn from Paul today and implement these principles into our marriages so as to produce strong, healthy marital cords tied with knots that won't slip. I can't think of a more appropriate closing to this teaching than the next three verses of the text. Allow me to offer them to you as Kind of a closing prayer of sorts. Paul goes like this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. And be thankful. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. God bless you. Have a great day.